Hi, I'm Jeffrey O'Malley. Right now we're at UNICEF, where I'm the director of the Division of Policy and Strategy. My first job in the United Nations was with the World Health Organization, which I joined in 1989. I showed up in Geneva with my pure steers and my bicycle, and I was almost certainly the only out gay man in all of WHO headquarters. Our boss at the time was a man named Jonathan Mann, and Jonathan deliberately wanted to bring into the staff people who came from communities that were heavily affected by HIV so that the response of WHO would be more responsive and sensitive to those needs. And I think that was a, a brave and, and important stance of Jonathan. It wasn't long before Jonathan himself was asked to leave WHO by its Director General of the time, which was understood at the time as a reaction to Jonathan's focus on human rights and community mobilization rather than more traditional public health approaches. And I left WHO along with Jonathan and, and joined him at Harvard and then spent most of my career in universities and NGOs. I rejoined the UN system in 2007 when UNDP hired me to direct their work on HIV, tuberculosis and malaria. By joining UNDP, I automatically became part of a group of staff convened by UNAIDS called the Global Coordinators, the most senior staff at all the agencies in the system who were responsible in one way or another for HIV work. I realized I was the first LGBT person ever in a Global Coordinator role. This was in 2007. 20 years into the UN system response to the epidemic, 25 years into the global AIDS epidemic starting. And I it was the first time there'd been an LGBT person appointed to that kind of role. There were plenty of lesbians and gay men at UN AIDS at the Secretariat at the time, but there seemed to be a glass ceiling at P5. And I also discovered that the UN system, which assigned responsibilities for different issues and populations to different agencies, didn't assign anyone with responsibility for how HIV affected gay men and other men who have sex with men. UNFPA was responsible for HIV in young people. UNHCR was responsible for HIV in refugees. UNODC was responsible for HIV in drug users. But no agency was responsible for how HIV affected gay men, despite the obvious fact that gay men, other men who have sex with men and trans people, were so hard hit by the epidemic. I approached the head of UNDP at the time and asked him whether he was willing to take leadership as UNDP on this important issue. There was a lot of prejudice around at the time, people within UNDP and outside who assumed that UNDP would never take on this issue, especially because the head of UNDP at the time was a Muslim man. But I'm delighted that Kamal Dervis instantly agreed as soon as he saw the data about how HIV HIV was affecting gay men, other men who have sex with men, and trans people. He not only agreed to take on the issue, but he held a media conference to talk about how important it was. Five years later, I left UNDP and I, I joined UNICEF, and I'm now in a position that's more of a corporate position. I'm not working on HIV or sexuality issues directly anymore. And so my sexuality comes up a lot less often than it used to. In fact, it really only comes up if somebody asks about the photo on the wall behind me, which is my partner, my son, um, or if people happen to look at my CV where it's pretty clear I've worked for a long time on LGBT issues. I'm delighted that here at UNICEF, the senior leadership of the organization, like the senior leadership, I think, of the whole UN system, is strongly supportive of including LGBT people throughout the, or throughout the staff of the institutions. But we still have more to do. Our human resource policies have to catch up, our diversity policies have to catch up, and we have to make sure all of our staff have the same kind of sensitivity and commitment that is now being shown by our leaders. Thank you.